Hey everybody, welcome to another Pigeon Pack How To. This time we're doing If I Sit Still, Maybe I'll Get Out of Here by TTNG. Are you ready for this? Because I'm not. Uh, this song is a lot of work. Um, you're going to be tested with all of your might, all of your tapping skills, all of your finger picking skills. I'm really going to be working hard here. Um, we've got our guitar in a fun open tuning. Our strings are C. G, D, G, B, D. However, we're using a capo on the sixth fret, and I'm not going to do the math to find out what those notes are. So we've got this sound. All right. Now that we've got our guitar ready, we're going to start with the first part of the song. I should mention that there is an official TTNG tab book that does have this song. Um, I do not have that book, uh, so I tabbed this myself uh, based on live performances and some other tabs on the internet that I don't particularly agree with. Um, so there may be slight differences, but this will definitely get you through the song and I don't think anyone would uh, bother you about it. The intro to this song really starts us off with uh, a lot of hard work and a lot of hard tapping. The first thing we're going to do is pluck what would normally be the A and the B strings. And that's our first little note. After that, we're going to hit the 4th and 5th fret on the D string. From here, we're going to do what I like to call the sloppy slap. Uh, because we are going to use three fingers here and hit the 8th fret on the B, the 7th fret on the G, and the 7th fret on the D, and just kind of hit them in this weird triplet formation of... Like, kind of like you're, like you're bored and you're like, let's get on with this. So we've got... While you're doing the sloppy slap with your right hand, you're going to be moving your left hand over to the 4th and 3rd fret of the G and B strings, respectively. So you've been over here on the 4 and 5 on the D, and then you're going to jump over here. So, what that sounds like slow... And you might be thinking, I couldn't really hear that at all. Uh, and that is... An issue with playing this song at a slow pace for learning, um, since it's all tapping, it's kind of hard to really hear that you're hitting everything. But you gotta believe in yourself a little bit, because if you do it fast and go to the next part, which I'll explain soon, kind of get a little more of that ring and understand what you're doing here. So, what did I just do? Well, I had my fingers on the 4th and 3rd frets, and then I pulled off on the 4, and then pulled off on the 3. We're back in a point where we have no hands on the fretboard. So we've got a little rest point, so we can really just start practicing that as much as we can. Now, we are going to kind of strum lightly over here, the low strings, and then we're going to hit, we're going to do a, a bit of a sweep. Um, we're going to be doing this shape right here, which is 4-4-5-7. Four, four, and we're going to hit the low E, and then sweep down. Now this is a very fast motion that we're going with. So if we play it with the song, now 
Now we're going to take our fingers off of the fretboard and pull off only on the E string. So we were here and we're gonna go and then pretty immediately jump over to the second fret on the E string. And then after the hammer onto the two, we're going to do another hammer onto the four of the A string. Then we're going to take our right hand and go on the seventh fret of the D string, slide it up to the ninth fret, and pull off. So now we can try to put all of that together. So that is generally the entire first part. However, after the first go around of this part, uh, I would suggest instead of playing those first two notes, I would suggest strumming down on the lower strings. Because if you listen to the song, there is that low note being played. Um, you could say maybe it's the bass, Maybe it's the second guitar. I can't say for sure, but I know that if I'm playing alone and I just do this the whole time, it doesn't sound right. So here's a comparison. Versus. So it adds a little something hitting that lower string. So the verse is kind of like an alternate reality version of the intro. Um, it's kind of the same feel, but a little more laid back. Uh, the way we start is exactly the same. We're hitting the lower open strings and then doing that four and five. After that, we are going to hammer on the eighth fret of the B string and then pull off, and we're gonna have our finger ready on the third fret of the same string. And then pull that off. So. So we're, now we're going to be hammering on the fourth fret of the G string. And then with the other hand, we're gonna hammer on the seventh fret and slide to the ninth fret. So we'll add that in. Now we're gonna hit this low string again, and then hit the fourth fret and then slide down to the second fret. This is the major part of the verse. The rest of the verse is different each time you play it. So the first time you're going on to the E string on the 9th fret, sliding down to the 7th, and then hammering on the 7th of the B string. So now the second time you play it, in place of that, you're going to be hitting the 7th fret of the B string, sliding up to the 8th fret, sliding back down to the 7th, and then sliding up again. For the third time around, you're going to play the exact same way as the first time. So that 9-7-7. Seven, seven. Now, 
for the fourth time, you're going to go onto the G string and hit the seventh fret, slide up to the ninth, hit the ninth fret of the D string, and then slide down to the seventh. Now you can put all of that together and play that all twice in a row. If you play that twice over, you've completed the entire verse. Now the next part is the intro again. So we don't have to teach anything new. How wonderful. <clears throat> the part after that uh, is a quick little instrumental break. Um, as in, you as the instrumental get to take a little break. All we have to do is play two chords. And those two chords are going to be uh, four on the E, five on the D, and four on the G. And you let that ring and you move up to six on the E, seven on the D, and seven on the G. And you let that ring. So. Now we can move on to the pre-chorus, which is a bit of a different part. It's more of a finger picking part than a tapping part. Um, so I'm going to try to split this up into the uh, low notes and the high notes so that you can kind of get a gauge and you can practice each one individually and then move on to putting them together. <clears throat> so I'm going to start off with the high notes because it's a little easier. Um, what you're going to be doing with your right hand is going onto the E and B strings and just playing in this pattern. So now we can add in what we're doing with the uh, left hand. And so we're going to only touch the E string and we're going to have uh, I would, I would suggest using the uh, ring finger um, and putting it on the ninth fret four times and then moving up to the twelfth fret four times again and then going down to the fifth fret so now you can put that together Notice we're doing the 5th fret part 8 times. Now we can do the low notes and we're going to be using our thumb for the strumming and we're going to be using the A and D strings and we're going to strum in this pattern. So now we can put in the left hand fingers, which we're only going to be putting fingers on the A string, and we're going to start on the ninth fret. And then we're going to hit that last ninth fret note and then slide quickly up to the eleventh fret. And then we're going to hit the 11 one more time and then quickly slide down to the 5th fret.
Now that we have the high notes and the low notes, we can try to start combining them. Now, if you're not used to doing this finger picking technique, uh, you might want to start with just doing the right hand and not dealing with the left hand yet. Um, so if you try to combine them, it will sound like this. So I'll try to play that real slow. Once you're feeling comfortable with your right hand, you can add in the left hand. Now we can move on to the chorus, which is the loudest part of the song. Uh, the guitar kind of hides behind the drums that are going all over the place, but you are still doing a heck of a lot of work. So let's get to it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get your fingers on the third fret of the B string and the second fret of the D string. Just have them sitting there. And then you're going to pluck the A string and then doing an upsweep of the rest of the strings. Immediately after that sweep, we're going to be pulling off the B string and then the G string in this rhythm. After that, we're going to hit the A string twice. As you are hitting the A string twice, move over your left hand and place it on the 8th fret of the B string and the 10th fret of the D string. And then you're going to do the same motion and the same rhythm. So you can put that together. Now you want to pluck the A string again, and then pluck the 9th fret of the E string. After that, we're going to hit the 9th fret of the D string, and pluck both of the G and B open strings. jump over to the fourth fret and do the same rhythm that we did with the ninth fret. So four on E, four on D, and then those two open strings. to hit the low E string. That is the part of the chorus that you are repeating each time, four times total. However, like the verse, there is a part at the end that changes between each part. So the first time, you're going to go onto the fourth fret of the D and G strings and strum them, slide down to the second fret, slide back up, and then pull off.
the second time around, you're kind of doing the same thing, but faster. Um, you're starting on the second fret, sliding up to the fourth fret and going back down, and then pulling off. And then immediately after that, you're going to hit the E string and B string. So now you can put that together. The third and fourth times are going to be the same as the first time. Now we can move on to the very end of the chorus, which is a finger-plucked um, chord. So all we have to do is put our finger on the second fret of the D string. And we are going to be playing this rhythm. So you can hear that the thumb is hitting the E string and going while the other fingers are hitting the other strings like so. That's going to be D, E, B, G, B, G, E. And putting it all together. Now we can finally move on to the last part that we have to learn, which is the interlude. Now the interlude, um, the way that he plays it um, is kind of really obnoxious. And I'm going to show that right now. Uh, I'm actually doing it with my fingers here. Um, if you can stretch your fingers like this, or I suppose like this, um, and you don't feel an incredibly uncomfortable pain, um, then good on you. I am a tall human being with large hands and this is quite uncomfortable for me. So I don't like doing that and I'm gonna be doing it a different way than I know that he does. Um, if you want to complain about it that's fine but this is exactly the same notes. Uh, the rhythm is just slightly different. So Without further ado, let's get into it. In his version, you're going to be on the 7th fret and the 12th fret of the E and B, respectively, whereas I will be on the 9th and 10th fret of the E and B, respectively. This is another finger-picked part, um, and I'm going to be going over the high notes before getting into the low notes. So, what you are going to want to do is play a rhythm that does B, E, G, B, E. Now, we're going to move our fingers over, and we're going to have the 5th fret of the E, the 3rd fret of the B, and the 5th fret of the G. And we're going to be playing this rhythm of... E, B, G. And then we're going to take our finger off of the E string and play that and take our finger off of the B string and play that. So we can put those two together. We're going to be playing that twice over. Now we're going to jump over to the 12th fret 
on the E and the B strings and playing E, B, G, E, B. Playing that twice and then doing the 5-3-5 five, five thing again. Once again, playing that twice over. Now you can play both parts together. And that is how to play the high notes. Now we're going to play the low notes, which is all on the E string. And all it is is a repetition of zero and four. That part really isn't so bad, but now you have to combine it with what you're doing with the high notes. So if you've got a good grasp on how to play the high ones, then you should have an easier time getting these low notes in there. And that is the entirety of the interlude. Um, so you play that a whole bunch of times, um, and the drummer goes wild, and you have a lot of fun, and then you play the chorus one more time, and that is the entire song. So now you have learned the whole song. Wow, give yourself a pat on the back, because this is a lot of work. <laughs>
Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope I've been helpful. Um, if you have any other songs that you want to hear, uh, get taught, whatever, uh, leave it in the comments, leave a like, subscribe, maybe we'll do your video, hopefully we will, hopefully we'll do a bunch of other videos. Catch you next time.